Hello everybody and welcome back. So, uh, today we will be on module 10. Uh, in the last module that was module 9, we have uh, I have mainly discussed on the biomolecular probes, uh, the basically the constructions of artificially synthesized uh, molecules that you can use uh, to study what is going on inside the cells. In other words, that will be give, uh, giving you reports back to you. So, detection purpose to see the live cell imaging or where you, uh, your biomolecules are actually going and what is happening. Those in order to know that uh, we have uh, synthesized or nowadays lot of different kinds of artificially synthesized molecular probes uh, have been used. So, I had tried to uh, give you a kind of one or two important uh, ones of them such as PNA and LNA along with SIRNA uh, which uh, can act uh, as um, biomolecules uh, especially for research purpose. So, today we will be uh, talking about a different topic that is uh, chemistry of carbohydrates. So, carbohydrate is of course, you uh, know that uh, it is a one of the very important biomolecule that is present in our uh, body in our cells. Carbohydrates constitute a major part of our body, uh, body constructions and it is also a major source of our cellular energy. So, there are uh, different kinds of carbohydrates uh, that are present in animal body, in plants, in microorganisms uh, such as if you talk about uh, uh, the plants, the stems of many different plants such as bamboo, straw, wheat, uh, majority of them are basically constructed of carbohydrates. And obviously, the small carbohydrate molecules, the small molecules containing the sugars and other uh, kinds of carbohydrates are the major source of the energy uh, in plants. Similarly, in animals uh, in higher organisms also uh, cellular membranes are constructed of uh, glycolipids. Uh, so, it is basically a combination of lipids and uh, uh, carbohydrate. Also, there are other parts uh, um, of the body that are uh, that have carbohydrates in it, and carbohydrates metabolism is obviously a major source of our energy. Microorganisms also have the same things, and apart from those, there are other kinds of uh, small molecules. Of course, they are also biomolecules, and they are present. Uh, in our body in higher organisms as well as lower organisms and that uh, have carbohydrate part in it or sugar uh, part in it such as obviously we have seen before to a large extent a DNA that is constructed of the deoxyribose sugar, RNA that is constructed of deribose sugar. So, these are the constructions of DNA and RNA on uh, large biological macromolecules. Small molecules includes ATP, adenosine triphosphate, adenosine diphosphate, they are the source of energy in our body, the cells and obviously along with that you know uh, there are many coenzymes, there are many enzymes that are uh, that have glycosidic part in it, there are many coenzymes such as NADP, nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, phosphate, FAD, flavine, adenine, dinucleotide and so on. There are many others and all of these coenzymes have uh, sugar uh, unit attached to it. Most of the times it is the ribose or the deoxyribose. So, these are the smaller uh, organic molecules or smaller biomolecules that contain the carbohydrates. Here if you see lot of drugs, uh, some of them are natural products, you can isolate it from natural sources, some of them are synthesized also. 
uh, they are very popular, uh, very well known drugs. Uh, these are mostly the anti tumor agents. Doxorubicin is a very famous chemotherapeutic agent uh, which is used in many different types of cancers. It has a glycosidic bond and that has a uh, carbohydrate uh, or the sugar moiety which is little bit modified of course here. Doxorubicin was initially synthesized from donorubicin. Donorubicin is a naturally occurring molecule or is a natural product. So, uh, this has uh, the amine group and this is uh, very close uh, similarity with the doxorubicin structure. This is epirubicin, this is idarubicin. So, many of them are uh, available as drugs in the market and they contain the carbohydrates. So, in general carbohydrates basically these are the organic molecules or organic compounds that show biological applications not only that they are themselves are biomolecules. So, they are the molecules that are abundant in the biological system. As I have said they are the major source of energy. Also, carbohydrate is the major source of the carbon that are needed in various cellular activities or uh, to synthesize uh, various uh, molecules in the cells, carbon containing molecules. It is a major source of carbon. in cells. Obviously, most of the smaller molecules that are present in cells have carbons in it and many of those molecules or the biomolecules are actually uh, derivatized or actually synthesized back from carbohydrates. So, it is a major source of car carbons in the cells also. They also serve as storage unit. in biological bodies. Or biological cells. Now, the name carbohydrate basically means that if you char a molecule what you get is carbon and hydrates means water. So, that is where the name came from. Carbohydrates means it produces carbon plus water. When you make it to undergo oxidations, massive oxidations. So, it is a major source, source of energy because that is uh, due to the metabolism effect which basically means the oxidation of the carbohydrates that produces the energy. Now, carbohydrates can be divided into uh, many different kinds. So, carbohydrates have the types of carbohydrates there are many different types one is of course we call it uh, monosaccharides. Carbohydrates are also known, known as saccharides. Mono saccharides. Monosaccharides are the carbohydrates which has a single carbohydrate unit such as 
obviously glucose, fructose, ribose of course, and all sorts of smaller structures which has a single carbohydrate unit is called monosaccharide. Uh, of course, I think most of these things that I will be uh, around the carbohydrates and their structures, their utilities, um, uh, most of those things you already know of, but for the sake of the course, I think I will go through them again. So, monosaccharides, second is, second division is called the disaccharides. Disaccharides are the ones, are the molecules. So, having a single carbohydrate unit. Disaccharides have two carbohydrates units, carbohydrate units and those are connected by glycosidic bonds. Connected by glycosidic bonds, a single glycosidic bond would be there. So, it is a bond. The example of uh, such the disaccharides can be lactose, sucrose and so on. I will show you the structure of lactose for example. To draw the chair conformation, so this is O. CH two OH, OH. This is the equatorial has hydrogen in it, and here the beta anomer down the plane. This is up the plane, OH. Now this is the glycosidic bond O, and there is another one that can be developed from here. So, is this O, this is the, the other one, here is your hydroxyl group, this is OH, OH and beta OH. So, you have a single glycosidic bond here and this is the structure of lactose which has two of the carbohydrate units. So, it is a disaccharide. And the third one is called oligosaccharide. Oligosaccharides obviously, that uh, name itself um, represents that it should have a multiple number of or more than two number of uh, carbohydrate units. So, in this case typically the oligosaccharides are the carbohydrates that contain around 3 to 10 units of monosaccharides. So, typical examples are dextrins, Dextrins are an important class of uh, oligosaccharides. They have lot of use uh, in 
pharmaceutical industry, uh, in textile industries, in other industries as well. So, lot of industrial applications from dextrins. Other one is the raffin series, raffinose. Raffin or raffinoses series of molecules. They contain multiple number of less than 10 number of monosaccharide units uh, attached via the glycosidic bonds together that is called the oligosaccharides. And the fourth one which you know a lot of examples of are called polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are basically the polymers of the monosaccharides. Polymers of the monosaccharides. More than ten. more than 10 units connected together via the glycosidic bonds. And these monosaccharides can be different, different means in the same polysaccharide there can be multiple number of monosac multiple kinds of monosaccharides, multiple number of course is there along with that multiple kinds of monosaccharides can be connected together to give you the polysaccharides. Cellulose. present in many plants is a major material that is obtained from plants. Glycogen, starch, these are all part of the polysaccharides. They have different kinds of units that are connected together to give you the polymeric structure and that is why they have uh, very long structures, very tough structures sometimes. So, I will give you a table. Uh, regarding the division of these sugars and then we will move on to the chemical part. So, if you make a table, so this is the class, what kind of sugar? This is subgroup, this is the components or the what materials are present in them. sugar can be monosaccharide examples are glucose galactose fructose xylose. I will show you with all the structures also just a little bit later. And then you have the disaccharide as we have talked. Examples of the disaccharides are sucrose, lactose, Three halos, three halos is a very important carbohydrate or a very important sugar containing molecule which has lot of biological applications. Maltose and then polyols. Such as very well known sorbitol, manitol, so that is one. So, basically first class sugar means which has one unit of monosaccharides or two units of monosaccharides. 
disaccharide and then comes the oligosaccharides. It's the first, second is oligo. saccharides the example I have seen uh, given is dextrin it can be uh, in general maltodextrins. So, oligosaccharides would be between 3 to 9 numbers of monosaccharide units then fructo oligosaccharide is also there and raffines and the last one is so this is basically 3 to 10 units then comes the polysaccharides polysaccharides are more than 10 so, more than 10 units of sugars, they can be divided into two part, one is the starch containing amylose and then amylopectin. and then non starch. such as glycogen cellulose of course pectins and so on there are other examples also so these are briefly the divisions that you can make uh, or the different classes of uh, carbohydrates now coming to the chemical structures. So, most of them of course, is it uh, kind of uh, have been evolved from the, uh, the, the basic unit which is glyceraldehyde. So, structural similarity or the uh, is from the glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde has this structure OH this CH2 OH this is glyceraldehyde and according to the nomenclature obviously glyceraldehyde has a chiral center here because all four groups attached to the carbon are different. So, it is a chiral uh, center which is optically active and therefore, it can it should have two isomers one is this other one is this I have drawn the Fischer projection this here H CH 2 H this is also glyceraldehyde. So, according to nomenclature this is D glyceraldehyde because the O H is on the right hand side dextro. So, D glyceraldehyde. So, now uh, here in this class I will talk about only the monosaccharides and all those monosaccharides are mostly of D configurations. So, and this is L glyceraldehyde glyceraldehyde. So, I will not talk about the L isomer, we will mostly talk about the D isomer. Now, D glyceraldehyde if you go one carbon up from here then what you synthesize what you get is two here two optical centers or two carbon chiral centers CHO this one remain as it is D because that is where the name is coming from. Now, here the next one can have the same or this remains D 
here this can be the opposite O H H C H 2 O H. Now, if you have multiple carbon centers, did you hear the name erythro and 3 O? So, same side and the opposite side, this is known as it basically erythro and 3 O uh, the concept basically came from the sugars. This is called erythros, 4 carbon units, both the hydroxyl groups on the same side. This is called 3 O's, where the hydroxyl groups are on the opposite sides. So, this is the 4 carbon units and now moving on. Erythros, this is the O three O's, if you move to one carbon up again, so here it is basically C three. 3 carbon center, this basically becomes C 4, C 4, 4 carbon centers, C 4, C 4 and from here one step up ascending series 5 carbon, C H O O H H. OH H. So, this should be C H 2 O H. Now, the new one can be O H in this direction. This is your arrivals. So, that the difference is in the new one C H O. This can be the other way around. H O H remains same. So, we are adding up. So, this is what is the new addition right. Uh, from here the new carbon is joining here. So, this should change the other should remain intact. This is your ribose, this is your ara venos. Similarly, from 3 O's you can draw 2. So, this is your C 5, C 5 that is evolving from erythros from 3 O's is C H O, this is the new one. So, it can be O H H H O H O H H C H 2 O H that is your xylose and H O H H O H O H H this is your lixos. So, ribose is a sugar that is abundant for in DNA and RNA. Similarly, if you move up, I am not drawing them you will have altros and allos that is the 6 membered ring with the 6 carbon and from arabinos that I will draw in the next page what you will have is because these are the most well known one 
glucose and mannose. From xylose you can have again glucose also and idose, lixose you will have galactose and tallose. Those are for the 6 carbons. So, structure of glucose is very important. So, these are all aldose sugars. I will draw the structure of glucose CHOH, HOH, this is OH, HOH, OH, OH, OH and CH2OH. This is your D glucose, it's basic sugar, a source of energy. So, it is a purely optically active molecule which shows uh, the specific uh, optical rotations and this is of course, aldose sugar. So, monosaccharides can be of uh, two different kinds, one is aldose means which has an aldehyde group here and other one is the ketose such as the fructose. So, as we move on I will show you the structure of fructose. So, aldose and that would be ketose because that has it has the general structure of the ketose is the first one will have the CH2OH and then you will have the keto and then the other way around it will move on. When you form a disaccharide uh, then you need to form a glycosidic bond right. So, I will show you first a reaction uh, through which a glycosidic uh, bond can be formed in a synthetic way. The name reaction is Konig Knorr reaction actually K O umlaut as a German pronunciation if you write in English you will find this most this spelling in book. Konigs nor reaction for the formation of glycosidic bond. In this case, if you start for example, if you take the chair conformation, you start with a halide alpha uh, 1 bromo. You have here CH 2 OH, this is OH, this is OH and this is alpha OH. So, first thing is you have to do the is the protection of all the hydroxyl groups otherwise it will react and that can be done very well that you know already we have done some sugar chemistry uh, during DNA synthesis acetic anhydride if you add then or acetic uh, acid also then this will protect all the hydroxyl groups. Bromine. So, this will be converted into OAC, this would be OAC, O acetate, CH 2 OAC. So, you have to form a glycosidic bond over here. It is usually done by using Ag 2 CO 3 a mild reagent actually silver carbonate. What it does is it will precipitate one molecule of AgBr. AgBr would be forming and that will precipitate out that is the driving force for the reaction. So, it will drag the beer I uh, will show you the structure in a structural orientation this O 
O A G. This is the structure of A G 2 C O 3. B R minus goes there, it will take up, this will become a kind of a minus. Since the B R minus is getting out, this will uh, create a positive charge on this carbon that will be to some extent compensated by the lone pair of oxygen and you will form plus this complex. OAC, OAC, OAC. Now, you have acetate and that has double bond oxygen. So, this will attack here, open this up. That will uh, give you a better complex or better intermediate, energetically more favorable intermediate. So, basically O here it will form a complexation and this will be delta plus of course CH3, this will be positive charge over here OAC, OAC, OAC. So, that blocks the down the plane. And now, you have to form the glycosidic bond, you react it with just for example, you treat it with methanol. So, your first reaction is basically treatment of this compound with acetic anhydride uh, Ag2CO3 and methanol. So, what this will do? This will come attack this carbon, this will open up, but this attack has to come from the top position here, because the down is blocked by the acetate. So, that triggers the stereochemistry. So, it will be up the plane O CH 3 up the plane and then rest will come as it is OAC back OAC this is OAC CH2 OAC and for ester hydrolysis you can cleave the acetate and get back your hydroxyls back. So, this is the formation of the glycosidic bond. So, one of the reactions which you can use to form the glycosidic bond. As I had shown that from glycerol dehyde you, uh, you can approach or you can synthesize all the higher orders of the monosaccharides. So, I will show you a couple of uh, reactions which or methods which are used, uh, this is pretty old reactions actually, many of you already know of, uh, of all these reactions. Those are used to increase the number of carbons on the glycerol dates or on the sugars. So, one of them, uh, so this is called ascending series, I will call them sugar ascending series. So, if you start from let us say arabinose and you want to get uh, synthesis glucose from there, this is the structure. One, two, three. So, D and this is D means the minus actually, this comes from your experiment. This is D arabinose. The question is how can you increase the one carbon here? So, the reaction is called as Killiani reaction.
very well known reaction, it is a name reaction, very old reaction. The way to do is to add up one cyanide over here because cyanide is a source of carbon. So, if you treat this with KCN or, a or HCN, not a nice reaction because cyanides are very, very harmful of course, all of you know, but in a controlled way. Nowadays, you can bypass uh, these reagents uh, in little bit modern reagents, but still. So, this is the I am talking about the old method, the actual uh, reaction that people have used. So, if you have cyanide, if you use cyanide, what it will do? This will cyanide is basically C n minus nucleophilic addition on the aldehyde. So, you will have C n here, C n, and this becomes. O minus CH OH. It can be this way, it can be the other way around also. And rest will be as it is H OH OH H OH H CH2 OH plus you will have the other one, this is H, this is O minus H O H O H H O H H C H 2 H. It turned out that this is actually the minor product and this is actually your major product. This is according to Cram's rule, if you remember. This is a uh, uh, very famous carbonyl compound reactions of which way the uh, incoming nucleophile will come depends uh, that is governed by a rule called known as the Cram's rule. I will write it here. So, according to Cram's rule, this should be the major product and obviously O minus would become a OH. So, what you basically have now is this as a major product, you have a cyanide and you have H OH H OH OH H OH H H to OH. Now, you have to convert this into an aldehyde. You can use it using the uh, catalytic hydrogenation pallad, uh, hydrogen palladium or if you do one electron uh, you can also use dibal. It's aluminum reagent diisopropyl butyl uh, diisobutyl aluminum chloride. So, that will give you the basically CH2 NH2 and this on further hydrolysis. So, this is number 1, number 2 would be further hydrolysis that will move it to the aldehyde. HOH, HOH. OH H OH H CH 2 OH. This becomes your H OH H OH this is actually your mannose and from the other one from the other one if you do this minor product this will give you your glucose. So, if you want to have your glucose, I think you have to start with the ribose. As a major product, if you want glucose as the major product, you have to start with the ribose, not arabinose. So, this is one reaction uh, for increasing the carbon in the sugar. Another reaction is Neff carbonyl reaction.
So, in general you have a CHO, I am not writing the stereochemistry anymore, just taking a general example CH3, CH2OH, if you treat this with a nitro compound. So, the idea is you have to create a carbon ion that will act as a nucleophile to attack on the aldehyde. So, you have to use a base OH minus containing or I will simply write base, it can be dif many different kinds of bases can be used. So, base that will actually produce a carbon ion CH2 NO2. This carbon ions because of the presence of the NO2 which has strong electron withdrawing ability is quite stable and it is a good carbon chemistry actually good carbon ion chemistry. So, this will react here opening up. So, we have CH2 NO2 in the next phase you have CHOH and the other CHOH. So, you have created a new CH2OH and then on base catalyzed hydrolysis. this you can convert it into the aldehyde CHO CHOH CH2OH. So, you have now one carbon up. So, these are some of the very well known techniques to all our meth organic chemistry methods that uh, we use in the laboratory to vary the number of uh, carbons. So, to in this case I have talked about the ascending series you know means the uh, addition of one carbon there. Now, coming to the descending series. So, starting with higher order, how can you reduce one? For example, you start with glucose, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. So, this is your D glucose. If you treat this with hydroxyl amine, then what do you get? This act as a nucleophile, this comes back. So, you will have CH and then it basically liberates water, one molecule of it is a condensation reaction, right carbonyl with amine condensation is very popular. So, this will have your C H double bond N O H O H H H O H O H H C H 2 O H. Now, if you heat this up, ideally this can remove another molecule of water, but this does not happen like that. It works best if you use a little bit of acetic anhydride. So, that will uh, basically eliminate another molecule of water and this will create your cyanide CN. At the same time, since you have used the acetic anhydride, it will protect all the hydroxyl groups as well. So, you will have now OAC O 
OACH CH2 OAC. Now hydrolysis, ester hydrolysis basically to deprotect all these that will create CHOH and all the rest of it. I am writing this because I need this HOH, OHH, OHH, CH2OH. If you treat this with a base, what happens? Base will take up this uh, proton, it will go and your cyanide will be eliminated because cyanide is also a good living group. So, that will expose the CHO, one CHO here and this one carbon would be gone. So, you will have CHO and then the rest of it, one carbon down, HOH, OHOH, OHH, CH2OH. So, you have descended one carbon here. Now, this base is actually you should not use a very strong base obviously, because the, this is kind of anomeric uh, one. So, it is very labile. You need a mild base and the reagent is you use silver nitrate in it is called ammoniacal silver nitrate right in ammonium hydroxide which is known as the ammoniacal silver nitrate. This basically generates ammonia complex plus OH minus. So, mild uh, base. So, you have free OH minus that will act as the base here. So, this is basically the OH minus that will take up the proton will do this chemistry. And this reaction is known as the Holtz method. to reduce sugars okay one to reduce a carbon second reaction is if i start with the same glucose ohh hoh H 2 H glucose again and then you treat this with bromine water. Bromine water is used to oxidize aldehyde to carboxylic acid. So, you will have a carboxylic acid and all the rest of it. Then treat this with calcium hydroxide and heat it up, you will form CO whole to CA. H 2 OH. This if you treat it with Fenton's reagent, Fenton's reagent is basically your FeSO4 in hydrogen peroxide. Then you get elimination of carbon dioxide and this will be next carbon would be exposed. So, this will become obviously a CHO and you have 
this OH H OH H CH 2 OH. This is another method through which you can reduce one carbon on the sugar and this uh, reaction is known as rough synthesis or rough reaction. Another very interesting thing is a, a very important reaction that a sugar undergoes and that is uh, for the formation of osha zone is called the Amadori rearrangement. If you take either a allose or a ketose and if you treat it with, uh, with a phenyl hydrazine, you will get the formation of osha zone. People have used that chemistry for various other aspects uh, also. So, we will I will show you the uh, Amadori rearrangement first and then we can maybe use it later. Aldohexose if you start with 6 carbon with aldehyde is called aldohexose. Phenylhydrazine NH NH2. Phenylhydrazine reacts with a carbonyl compound to give you phenylhydrazone minus water. It is condensation reaction, it is very well known. In NH pH. this. Now, this can happen and you can use a little bit of base also. This NH pH, this will create this OH CHOH whole 3 OH. Now, this is the driving force, this will come and this, this will take up the proton and this will open up. This is basically the Amadori rearrangement, this is the rearrangement. So, you will remain with CH double bond. So, this will be here NH and you will form a keto. Whole 3 CH 2 OH. So, I will basically write it here this. This is coming here, it will take up will go there. and you exposed now an another ketone. If you treat this with another molecule of phenyl hydrazine that will again condense with the keto NH C double bond in NH pH. whole 3 CH 2 OH. Another molecule of phenyl hydrogen will hydrolyze this and will replace this by the same compound in NH pH in NH pH CH whole 3 CH 
is to OH. This would be formed and this is known as Osazon formation. This actually is used uh, some of this chemistry has been used for in the next one I will show you uh, the epimerization if you want to change the stereochemistry of the anomeric carbon. Uh, this is one of the way to do it even from allos to ketose conversion uh, you can also do using this kind of chemistry. Thank you.